Hey everyone, welcome back to Trailbreaker. In the past, the only thing that the occasional chain drop would cost me would be maybe a couple seconds on the trail and maybe some sweet downhill flow. But on my last ride, a chain drop on this bike is costing me about $700 in broken parts. So, I'm still waiting for parts, but in the meantime, I'm going to install the one of Components V2 chain guide on the trail bike, and I'm gonna install the one of Components V2 chain guide with bash guard for my enduro bike. Uh, it's gonna be super simple, and it's something I wish I'd have done before. Stick around. So whether you get the chain guide only or the chain guide with bash guard, they're absolutely identical except for uh, one other bolt and the bash guard. The uh, shape is exactly the same, the installation is the same, and all the adjustments are identical. The only tool I'm gonna need to do this is gonna be a four millimeter hex. If you needed to change out the bash guard, all you need to do is remove this uh, clip which gives you access to the other bolt. And these are both five millimeter bolts to allow you to move, remove this piece. Uh, this is a 34 max, which I'm gonna use because I have a 32 tooth oval. It also comes with a 30 tooth max and a 36 tooth max bash guard. The only other thing you get is a little bag with a bunch of little parts. No instructions, but that's what I'm for. So in this bag, you've got the mounting bolts, you've got uh, a couple spacer washers, and what these washers are for is if you try to mount this on the bike and there is a suspension component or part of your frame that is hitting this, you can space it out by this amount. These shims, are used once this is mounted to align the chain guide itself with the chain. The nice thing is we can mount this and do all the necessary adjustments on the bike with the crank still installed. So this should be pretty quick. Um, it does allow you to be able to uh, move this out of the way if you need to. Uh, in this case, it just uses the four millimeter hex to loosen up this front chain guide to swivel it up out of the way. With a four millimeter hex, you can loosen this and it allows you to swivel this guide out of the way. There's also a marker right here, if you can see it, which is the outline of a chain link. Once this is installed, you would like your chain line to be in line with that. In order to do that, if you reach through here, there's another four millimeter we can release, loosen this up, and this can be positioned up or down to get this positioned right behind the chain. So here are the two mounts I'm gonna use for this installation. So right now it's mounted with no uh, shims behind the bracket and it appears to be perfect, nothing's obstructing. Now I just need to align the guide head. And here you can see that little chain link indicator. That is about as low as I can get it to accommodate the tallest portion. And the clearance, it is very, very close on the inside, but it's not rubbing. Now I'll go ahead and individually take each of these out, put some Loctite on them, and tighten them up. That was about as easy as it gets. Let's see how it works installing the chain guide with the bash guard on the Enduro bike.
So right now I've got the bracket mounted and there is no interference with parts of the frame. It's kind of hard to tell, but uh, I've got about a millimeter and a half of clearance here. And I've got about three or four millimeters of clearance between the bracket and the chain stay. Now we'll use this little gauge to see how many shims we need to install between the bracket and the chain guide. So right there, it looks like three should be perfect. There's a little indent in the back of the rear guide and it matches up with a little bump out on the shims. So they should just line up perfectly. So one, two, three. Slip those on. There's a little indent. Place this on. Rotate it down. And that looks pretty good for now. All right, so I just checked the clearance side to side by shifting it all the way from the smallest to the biggest cog, and it's not rubbing, and it looks like it's perfectly good. Now we just need to align the height to get enough coverage to keep this thing on. Okay, now just like last time, I'm gonna go ahead and remove each of these bolts individually, apply just a little bit of Loctite, and snug them back up. I think that looks perfect. That was a super simple project that couldn't have been easier and it looks awesome. And if you told me that if I spent $50 on a part, it could save me over $700 in damage, man, I would do that all day long. You need to get one of these things. If you have any questions about anything I did today, go ahead and leave it in the comment section down below. If you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you're like me and refuse to act your age, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.